world simulator for your car. It runs on that computer, that supercomputer. The goal is we would run it at super real time. We would run this car in this world so fast that we can cover billions and billions and billions of miles over time. And we would like to be able to run it against two <clears throat> types of models. Either running it on the DGX, that again, with a software model, or run it on a drive PX. Excuse me, Paul. <coughs> this is where you go like this. Or you can run it on a NVIDIA drive. <laughs> NVIDIA drive, for example, like the NVIDIA drive. <laughs> Okay, connected, running the entire software stack, connected to that machine, running a virtual world. Can you guys see that? Okay, so this is hardware in the loop. And so why don't we take a look at that? Mark. Hi, Jensen. Hey, Mark. <laughs> this is Mark David, guys. All right, so why don't you take it away? So, so uh, okay. yeah, take it away. Yeah, well, so uh, this is a little configuration of our virtual environment. We want to show you that we can change some of the parameters of our world and some of the parameters of our car. So let's play with the world a little bit first. I'm just going to just do a few fun little changes and move the sun. Let's bring it down, make it a little closer to a sunset. Get a nice little glare off the road. Uh, and one of the things I love to do, we can't do on planet Earth, but we can do in our simulator. Let's move the sun this way. <laughs> we can cast shadows across the road. That plays a lot of havoc with sensors sometimes. Or cast them the other way, or put a nice big glare in the driver's <laughs> eyes, a nice specular highlight coming off the road. And as you, as you know, one of the things that LiDARs and cameras are most scared of is direct sunlight. Okay? All right, next. Okay, so that's our environment. Let's, uh, let's jump over and configure our car. Now we're looking out, the, if you look on the right side of the screen, we've got four cameras hooked up to our car, and we're looking out the front camera right now. Let me run over and... Uh, play around with that front camera a little bit. Uh, so first of all, I could simply move it anywhere I want to in the environment. It's over to the driver's side, over the passenger side, maybe I want it toward the front of the grill of the car. And maybe, maybe uh, you're using exactly the same chassis and the same computing platform, but the design, the industrial design of the car is a little different, and so the placement of the camera is a little different, and before you go and build that clock car, you would like to be able to configure the cameras accordingly and run quick simulations to make sure that against the billions of miles that you already collected up, it's going to work. That's right. And uh, let's move over here and let's configure one of the other sensors. Here's, uh, here's my right-hand camera. Okay, one second. Right now it's uh, focused almost directly to the side of the car, but I might want to look a little further toward that blind spot toward the rear of the car. I can simply rotate that camera and boom, I'm looking at the rear of the car. Okay, that's cool, let's run it. Okay, now that's our environment, let's run the simulator. Okay, and remember this is the simulator and that is the NVIDIA drive. Now, remember this, because the architecture of NVIDIA drive and the architecture of that supercomputer is identical, it's binary exactly the same. So we could take the entire software stack that runs on this and run it inside that software in the loop. Does that make sense? Okay, this is one of the great things that we can do as a result of using an architecturally thoughtful approach to developing the self-driving car. All right, go. All right, on this side is the simulator. On that side is the car driving by itself inside the simulator. The entire stack is exactly the same. It detects lanes, it detects cars. It detects lanes, cars, signs. Basically exactly the same software stack. Okay, Mark? And once again, one of the beauties of the uh, simulated world is we can set up some uh, kind of dangerous situations you do not want to do on the, on the real road. We got our friend merging here. No! 
Oh, okay, that we was can, close. That was we can see that our auto drive hit the brakes as this guy made a uh, not too common move. And okay, so that's soft. So that's software in a loop. Can you guys do hardware in a loop? Of course we can. Exactly the same software tool, exactly the same software stack. We're now simply going to replace the software module and slide in this hardware module. Okay. So let's switch over to. Uh, Let's see it. Okay, so now we're actually running on a drive PX2 as the hardware in the loop and the simulator is, uh, is showing this <laughs> virtual world. <laughs> and, oh, my reason. reason. <laughs> <laughs> we found a new driver. So we're actually interactively inside of the simulator driving another car, manually driving another okay, car. Okay, now you can see that this is RGB. The reason why, the reason why, hey, Curtis. <laughs> The reason, the reason why.